Okay, it's time to finish this house. If you've been keeping up with my How to Build series, you'll know that we built the outside, the inside, and now it's time to work on the outside again. Specifically today, terraforming and landscaping. Two very important aspects if you want your houses to look really good. The first thing I like to do is definitely create a path going to the house itself. And then underneath of these stairs, since we're using path block, either put the same type of slab or just a block that matches the stairs. Build your path connecting the house to whatever you need to connect it to. In this case, I just connected it to our smaller house. There are so many different ideas you can do for a path. Like, for example, I just kind of copied the main basic path, but if you wanted a more jungly path, you could do something like this, where you take coarse dirt gravel, some mossy blocks, combine that with the path block itself. It looks really good. Over here, like, I have a really good boardwalk-esque kind of design, where you just take some wood, uh, along with some stairs have streams going down it and then we have this which is like a concrete-esque kind of path with very beautiful lamps so yeah no there's a lot of things you can do with your path pick one and run with it for my path what i'm thinking is i'll do the path block and then also cobblestone uh water lines i think this will look good when i'm putting the water on a hill like this what i do is i go ahead place it in the bottom stair first and i also replace that with cobblestone so I place it in the bottom stair first, so that way when that flows, it doesn't go everywhere like it would if I were to just do that. And what I'm thinking is, let's go ahead and line this with copper trap doors. I think this will just add to the aesthetic of it, and it'll just give it a little bit more variety than just using plain wood. I laid out where I want my trap door walls. I guess I can put a little more over here. This part right here is like perfect for the court, just because where it's at. Option one of what we have is I'm taking rooted dirt and just turn this into a flower bed. So yeah, just making it a little bit decorated, just like that. And if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and plant a cherry grove tree as well. And it just adds on to the gardening feel. And it looks really good. And especially with the cherry grove trees, a beautiful thing you can add are these pink petals. Just like align your world with them. And it just, they look phenomenal. So yeah, let's go ahead and add some of these in here. Since I have this, we're going to stick to the color style that we have. So a lot of the pinks, a lot of the whites. Because if we go too far and like, let's say throw like blue or something in there, it will not look good. Another option we can put these bushes along the corners of the houses or even along a flat side of the house. Um, I'm using specifically cherry grove, azalea, and oak leaves just because I think they're the best at looking one for the aesthetic that we're going for, especially with the cherry grove leaves since we have the cherry grove tree. And what we'll do as we go is add some more cherry grove trees around here. I'm not doing that just yet. We'll get to that here in a sec. And like we can have it where the bushes are, or the leaves are where starting to climb the house too. That look, that would look cool. Every house needs some form of food source. So we'll put a little farm over here. Another beautiful thing about this water canal design we have going is for the farm. We can go ahead and line at till dirt with the stairs and put water sources in them just making it look nice and just seamless through the entire tilled area we can then go ahead and take some copper grates use that as a base to our light post a tough wall put a copper bulb here power this make sure this is waxed of course i just use the waxed one because i'm in creative but use honey to wax if you did, aren't in creative just line this with some jungle trap doors and you got a beautiful lantern right here for your farms and i love how these look i'm gonna add some more of these to our path of course you can always replace the lanterns with actual lantern items or if you wanted to like glowstone or something to keep yourself sane and not have to farm so much copper but there is nothing wrong with this lanterns can be very simple and still look aesthetically pleasing to your world you don't need to go all out and make this very complicated build and just lose your sanity over it. That's my goal is just do simple things and make it just look good with what you do. And here's a couple ideas you could use if you want some lantern ideas. A lot of my basic ones are based off of these over here. And it's a good example of how you can take one basic idea and make multiple varieties of it. Like these three have the same base, but different ideas when it comes to the lights. And these four, mainly just different block combinations. These two, I just kind of threw them together to see what would come up with them. Right, now that we've got the lanterns and the path set up, let's go ahead and add some more trees. If you don't like a lot of trees, you don't need to do as many as I did. And of course, you want to put as many of these down on the ground if you're using uh, cherry blossom trees i'm probably not going to do too many but you can absolutely put however many you would like one of the most important things you can do is go ahead and connect the rest of your base to your house for example i have this nether portal here which just basically gets connected with a path and the little design i did was just kind of thrown together i'm not great with nether portals but i just took the path extended it with both co the cobblestone water the trap doors i used along with the lanterns just to make it match the rest of the area just like we did with the campfire it's just a matter of connecting your house to everything that's within your world to make it one feel all interconnected 
and two it just looks a lot better when it's connected to everything like right here i just have a house with some miniature houses off to the side and a boat dock and it's not connected and it doesn't look great we're not done as you can tell there's a lot of just blank grass everywhere what you'll want to go ahead and do is just add plants in bushes to the areas that are lacking in detail i went ahead and placed the panels around and now what i'm going to do is just build some basic bushes and what you can also do with the bushes is hide like shroom lights on the inside of them that way your base is lit up but the light itself is just completely hidden from view basically especially depending on the texture pack you use you can also do a design where the bushes start climbing up trees too that's always an option and after putting a little bit of bushes go ahead and take flowers that match your design in this case i'm doing the peonies the white tulips and the white oxide flowers just because that's what i've been doing and just place them around the area for your base so that way it shows oh these are actually flowers meant to be here it's not just in one central location and it just again adds that detail that gives your world that oh, nice cozy feel if you fill in the areas that just look like it has empty space with even like trees or bone meal the area it fills it in so that way you don't really have to build anything there and keep it simple i'm literally only using three types of flowers here just so that way i don't overdo it i don't want to have too many flowers i mean sure i could probably throw in uh one or two other flowers like okay let's do an azure blue or however you say that and the makes a little bit because i mean it still matches the color scheme if it's so you can just chuck in a little bit of variation from your typical pattern but you don't want to overdo it to the point where it just looks bad and it just does not go with the rest of your build for areas like this that are just really empty again just fill it in but if you don't want to take the extra bit just go ahead and bone meal it and get rid of any flowers that spawn that don't match your thing especially on the outer areas where you didn't really do much at if you bone meal out there it just looks nice and filled in it looks wild but i mean that's kind of what i'm going for here you don't have to do this you don't even need to use the bone meal aspect if you like it cleaner i just really like the woodsy nature feel now a lot of these tips really do depend like if you're doing a modern city kind of vibe don't do what i'm doing right now this is definitely a nature -y vibe maybe i'll do a modern city vibe in a different video but for what i'm doing this is a very nature -y vibing area and we bone milled let's do one more thing and then we'll be done so i added rooted dirt to our little flower bed over there earlier so let's just add some throughout this area of the world it just makes it seem like oh rooted dirt just kind of shows up here randomly and it doesn't make the ground look so green i mean there's nothing wrong with green don't get me wrong it just it adds detail and detail is really what you want and again it's the small things it's like you don't even need a lot of this stuff just enough to give the world a little bit of a different feel from just plain green and just th th what you see anywhere else you go to the world. I mean, most of the time, you're just going to see a plains biome or a desert biome. Well, when you go to your house, you want it to be unique. You want it to be different from the bushes to flowers, bow mealing, the rooted dirt, paths like this. There are so many things you can do to make your base look good. Like even a simple bench like this looks really nice. Here we have probably my favorite survival world I've done. And it's like right here, I got that similar lamppost that I have over in the other world, except this one's made completely out of wood because I kind of challenged myself to only build with world wood in this area. I got this nature path. I got bushes. I got just a variety of trees from azalea to cherry grove to birch. This I did right when like 1.20 came out. So yeah, this is kind of the world I got. But I just did it completely nature -y and it turned out really nice. And again, mess with your world. Do different things than you usually do and just test stuff out till you figure out something you like. That is how you make it look good. I connected the paths to everything in this world from over here all the way to this house all the way to my enchantment stump over there. Everything is connected. And like over here at the blacksmith, it's still the same style of path that I did over there all the way up until the beach. The beach I have different plans for. But yeah, it just makes the world feel so much nicer, so much like custom. It feels custom and you want that. Unless you don't want that and you just want your world to be a plains biome. But yeah, that is part three on my how to build better houses guide. Like I said, we started on the house itself in episode one. We worked on the interior in episode two. And in this episode, we just made this outside look phenomenal. Yeah, we went from a house that looked like this to having it look like this. And it's just, it feels cozier. The outside is beautiful. And it's like, it takes attention from any imperfections you may have in the build itself. And the outside can really bring together the house. Anyways, I've gone on enough about how landscaping and terraforming and stuff can make your house look really good. And by landscaping and terraforming, I mean just decorating the outside. 
So yeah, no, by all means, go ahead, go decorate the outsides of world of your worlds. Let me know what you guys take from this episode and what your favorite tip was of the day. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day.